going on, friends and family? My name is Skylint, and today we're going to be talking about my pick for top 10 crowdfunded MMOs. And it's really actually not just my pick. These are actually ranked based off of how much they have been funded. Yeah, all of these, though, have been funded. They have completed their goals, and they should release eventually sometime soon, maybe. I don't know. But I think that they all these games, all these games have something that is worth showing off, and I'm going to show it off here. I think these games are worth looking forward to, especially if you are a fan of their particular niches. So since these aren't AAA games, they're indie and they're crowdfunded games, they tend to focus on one very particular community, but that community says, fuck yes, we want this game. So if you're part of those communities, then these are the games to rally behind. Get hype, keep it alive, guys, with those thumbs up and the comments down. Now let's get into the list. Okay, friends, let's start the list off with, with something weird, with something really different. There's going to be a game called Eminence Xander's Tales. Now, this is an MMO trading card game. Okay, so let's explain that. It is an MMO because there is actually an explorable, real-time overworld to traverse. Now, I don't know how storied, you know, how RPG this is going to get, but it looks charming enough. It looks cool. I mean, just the concept is nice. Next, the trading card game component of it. It is a card game, but it is also a trading card game specifically, okay? So you can actually, what I know, you can take prizes, man. So there's going to be high stakes duels every once in a while. I don't know maybe if there's going to be like a wilderness or something, how, how these occur. But anyways, you can actually take prizes from other players. That, that's something different. I haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, anyway, so this actually reminds me a lot of like the Final Fantasy 8 and 9 card games. If you guys have ever played those games, super weird. OK, but I wanted to mention this because that's what Kickstarter is all about. Bringing to life these original concepts behind it or not. You have to admit this is uh, this is pretty unique. Close thing I could think of is something like Wakfu or Dofus, and those are tactics games, and this is a card game. So overall, I think this is a special experience waiting for us. Next up, coming out at number nine on our list, we have a game called Dual Universe. Now, what is Dual Universe? Dual Universe is a continuous single shard sandbox MMORPG taking place in a vast sci-fi universe. It's going to focus on emergent gameplay with player-driven economy, politics, trade warfare, all that good stuff for those EVE players and those who are also looking for, you know, pretty decent uh, space simulators, you know what I'm saying? So players can freely modify the voxel-based universe, apparently, to what extent we'll see when it finally releases, but yeah, I guess you can create create structures, spaceships, giant orbital stations, and uh, give birth to entire empires and civilizations. Now, we will see how far that comes along, because we know we've seen a couple of these games come out and on the rise, on the horizon. But again, this is one of those that's looking pretty decent. All right, so next up on the list, we have a game. Well, it, it's sort of a project kind of thing. It's called The Phoenix Project, but it's going to be called City of Titans. OK, so what City of Titans is, is essentially, well, from the ashes of City of Heroes and that concept, that ideology, that game, going to create a new game and hopefully bring in new players into this very niche but beloved uh, game genre here. So this, yes, is, is a superhero MMO. And honestly, Marvel Heroes and DC Universe Online just do not fill the particular niche that was City of Heroes. That was a very special snowflake of a game. And even though, yes, it's superheroes, the truth is that superheroes are not. Whatever aesthetic or skin you have on it, there just is no other MMO that really matches that gameplay, those mechanics. So yeah, it's, it's truly special. And of course, they're going to bring it back. They're going to be going full superhero with this. That's right. That suits and all, man. Next up on the list, we have a game called Chronicles of Illyria or Illyria. I still haven't figured out how to pronounce it after all of these top tens. I just keep mentioning this game. Still don't know how to pronounce it, but the game essentially is going to be kind of like a, I think, low to high fantasy game. Like there is magic and stuff to what extent I don't know. But really, the game's kind of main draw is that it's somewhat more realistic for a fantasy medieval game. Yeah, so no, your character actually ages and it actually has a unique monetization system where you pay per life. So yeah, try not to just go out and, and you die, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, your character actually ages and can probably die of old age classes players and people so some people are going to be better off some people won't be but anyways it all depends on your decisions you know if you want to be like a high mage or something like that maybe you want to you want to be a thief i don't know the game's pretty freaking ambitious they got quite the vision for this title mixing fantasy and hardcore kind of realism together it's unique it's a new concept but most likely because of the difficulty and you know pulling that off but it is fully funded and the internet is a buzz and I'm one of those buzzing. So I think this is a game that you should look out for. Okay, guys, so the next game I want to talk about is a game called Elite Dangerous, right? Um, there was a little bit of controversy in the beginning with this game, but it ended up getting funded fully and you can actually purchase the game in parts, kind of, sort of. 
Um, not too different from Star Citizen, I guess, but Elite Dangerous, you can actually buy the Arena version. And remember, guys, Elite Dangerous can also be played with VR. In fact, a lot of people are waiting until they get a good VR headset to play the game. It's just really freaking immersive. But what I think sets Elite Dangerous apart from the other games is that it's kind of more dogfighty. It actually seems like the combat is more of a focus for the game. And then they're slowly incorporating the other elements into maybe what you would want is, you know, a space sim. Like they just added in uh, a freaking alien. So that's pretty neat. Yeah. Anyways, guys, so I actually have the arena version of this game, and I think a lot of you guys are getting into the MMO portion, but there's still a lot to be done for the game, okay? So even though you can play it now, maybe it's best to wait, and especially if you get a VR headset. Anyways, what do you guys think of Elite Dangerous versus the other space sims that are on this list and out there, you know, in outer space? Let's talk about it. Alright guys, halfway on the list we have a game called Crowfall. You know what Crowfall is, I put it on so many top 10s, like number 1, 2s, and 3s, man. Seriously, it is very legitimately one of my most hyped games out there. I don't really know how I can reword the des description for this game. Uh, basically guys, there's gonna be voxel destruction in the game, there's gonna be keep creation, there's gonna be instance slash open world campaigns, kind of hard to describe, but uh, yeah, that you actually uh, participate in, but it's a uh, PvEVP, if you understand what that's like. Um, but it really focuses on the player versus player content. Uh, the combat mechanics seem extremely engrossing to me. All the different classes and characters play wholly uniquely. It really reminds me of the different characters in like MOBAs or something like that. And overall, I feel like this game oozes uniquity and specialness. And what, like the aesthetically, it looks like kind of like a cartoon medieval, you know, PvP kind of game. I think there's, it goes a lot deeper, you know, it goes a lot deeper with its economy, with like the whole campaign system, which we got to see in action. Oh man. And uh, I, I think there's going to be a lot more to the game than just what meets the eye. You know what I'm saying? Now, the number four game is going to be a game called Identity. Uh, Identity is actually going to be taking place in the modern day world. It's an open world as well. So this is a true MMORPG, just, you know, in, in modern day real life, I guess. And the, the kind of the concept here is, is that you can just do whatever you want. It, it's really more of like a second life type of MMO. It's, it's very, very social based. So apparently you can live as an honest, just civilian, maybe a criminal, maybe a police officer, paramedic, and so much more. There's no levels, there's no skill grinding, but there's going to be talents and perk progression. So I guess, you know, whatever your character is doing, you'll eventually like learn some new stuff. That's pretty neat. Um, and, and there's just a whole apparent, you know, a whole bunch that you can apparently do. Uh, so it's very social. There's going to be a lot of mini games slash casual games that you can, you know, participate in. Um, who knows what else is going to be added into the game and, and, you know, actually in the truest sense, actually good added to the game. But we'll see, man. It's got crowdfunded and I haven't played one of these games that actually offered true gameplay. Most of them are just glorified chat rooms. So we'll see how this one sticks out. But I think a lot a lot of people are pretty hyped for it regardless. Yo guys, okay, so this next game is actually going to be a little bit debatable. Now, we've already had a couple of games, and there's going to be games on the list that have sort of split personalities just a little bit. Like, you know, there's an online component or multiple online components and then a single player. But Shroud of the Avatar seems like it's really more focused actually on its single player content. And even its multiplayer content is really more about the personal role play aspect. It is very RPG. Like, if you think of the pure definition of just RPG in its historical context, that's kind of what this game is actually trying to do. It's aiming for that, but then trying to bring it, you know, innovate it into a new medium sort of a little bit. So there's different online, I guess, modes you can kind of choose from varying levels or degrees of multiplayer. Maybe there's going to be like local kind of or like lobbied and then MMO sort of a little bit. It might not be true MMO, but hopefully it will be. And then you can also play single player. You can actually play offline, which is pretty freaking cool. Anyway, so if you're a fan of hardcore old school RPGs, maybe you played some MUDs, maybe you played a few of the Ultimas. That's kind of what this game is coming from, but now brought into the new age. Number two on the list is a game called Star Citizen. Wow, yeah, no, yeah, Star Citizen, dude, one of the most back games of all time. Dude, Star Citizen is pretty hyped because of every reason that it could be hyped. In fact, I'm actually really proud that they are splitting um, off the game so that there is a single player campaign for those to maybe get interested into the mechanics, you know, the engine of the, of the game and actually play through a story. And then, you know, maybe that can entice some people to join the MMO or vice versa, actually. So yeah, they, they, there's gonna be an open world sort of Eve-ish style gameplay. I don't know how economy based it's gonna be or if it's gonna be you know, like to the degree of dogfighting like Elite Dangerous is or not, uh, how is it going to compete with... How is it going to compete with Dual Universe? I don't know. There's actually a lot of these games coming out and already out in early access, but Star Citizen is one of those that is just pure ambition in every single way. In every way that a game could be developed or be an art form, Star Citizen is trying to innovate in that direction. Of course, in freaking space. So Star Citizen is the big giant space simulation MMO that we have been hoping for and dreaming of. It might be spreading itself a little bit too thin though, but then again, they kind of got the money to do that. So let's hope for the best.
And number one's gonna be Camelot Unchained, which surprised the crap out of me, okay? I knew Camelot, you know, the Dark Ages of Camelot was a hugely inspirational game for many, many genres outside of itself, right? Mainly focusing on PvP, you know, the whole faction versus faction versus faction thing. We see it in Planetside 2, Elder Scrolls Online, Guild Wars 2, and many more coming and have gone. And it is just so exciting to see the game coming back because I want more of that. A lot of people want more PvP. We actually see that on this list. Even a lot of games focus on PvP, open world PvP. But I was just so surprised that so many people want specifically Camelot style gameplay and wow dude I am really hyped for this game it's gonna take a while I absolutely know that uh, there's not even really a true playable state currently so some of these games have been early access in this game I think backers do have the ability to play but uh, you know it's it's really really far off but still man on the horizon I see a twinkling star might be a bright burning sun and uh, this is something that I am probably very biased towards I love PvP MMOs and if you're gonna play a massively multiplayer online game for the PvP you want that PvP to say it with me, be massive. Right, exactly. We all think them feel the same way, and uh, we, obviously, it's statistically proven with how many people are supporting this Kickstarter. So keep the hype alive, guys. Wow. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you found a game to look forward to eventually, yeah. But these are crowdfunded games, so a lot of other people similar to you, similar mindsets, similar tastes, are rooting for these games as well, so don't feel bad about it at all. And remember, they are fully funded. Now, all we can do is kind of just sit and wait just a little bit. Now, some of these games, actually, you can play them right now, so maybe you should get on that. But otherwise, I guess all we can do is speculate, and I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know how you feel in the comments below. And if there's a game I missed, if you wanna have an honorable mention, a shout out, please also do that too. Again, thanks for watching friends. My name is Skylint. I hope you have fun and I'll see you in the next one.